God is the God of the armies. That's what the Holy Spirit asked me to come and declare. And when the Holy, when I state this, that today we are inaugurating the army and the ministry platform we used to call the army, they are no longer the army. They are the special forces of GFCC. The special forces. Special forces are usually units in different military formations. Special forces in the Air Force, special forces in the Army, special forces in the Navy. In police in Nigeria, they call, they, that's what they call mobile police force. Those are the special forces. That's what they call the IG, the IGP squad. Those are special forces. They have specialized training. As for the army, everyone, the special forces so from today, those in the ministry, we call them GFCC special forces. So God is the God of the armies. Turn to somebody and say, God, my God, my God. is the God of the armies. And thank God, I am enrolling in the army. God is the God of the armies. To make it more technically correct, we can say God is the God of hosts. Hosts. Abasi. Edi Abasi. Mudum. I will never forget it. As a young boy, my father was a God follower. Was a prophetic man. Whoever knew my father knew my father. If you didn't know him as a prophet, but you will know him as somebody who was God-centered. He was not a perfect man. He was a very serious person. Fanatical about his God and his faith. He will not allow Jehovah Witness. No Jehovah Witness person entered my family. And when missionaries come, they will warn you one particular compound you don't enter. And Rotu's family, you don't. So as a young boy, we had so much adversity as growing up. And that brought me face to face with the faith of especially my father. So in the high point of serious issues, my God, my father will announce the different names of God. Abasi Abraham, Abasi Isaac, Abasi Jacob. And I will be wondering, well, what, what are we talking about? I will laugh. And then, oh, Abasi Mudum. Ah! And the ground felt like shaking at the word Udum. My third child and my second son is Udum Ekong Yahweh. <laughs> no comment on that. So our God is not the God of few. is the God of hosts. The word hosts in Hebrew is Sabaoth. Sabaoth. It means Armies. It means battles. It means wars. It means striving. So God is the God of battles. God is the God of wars. And God is the God of hosts. God is the God of armies. Nations don't keep armies for peace. 
they keep armies for what? For war, for battles, for strifes, for troubles. The word hosts also means multitude, work, plentiful. That means in this case, host is not just plentiful, it's not just many, it's not just multitude. There can be multitude of cripples, of limbs. There can be multitude of blind people who cannot fight. But God is the God of the multitude. And if he meets a blind person, he gives sight to the blind person, raises the blind person, and makes the blind person a soldier in the army. That's the call upon my head. So you see some people come to church, to GFCC for the first time, and hear me, and they feel so insulted. Is it in this age that people are begging for people to be in their churches? That a man will be telling people, I allow you to go, I, I open the door for you in case Oh, wait, tell me, you do a bad. You may succeed, can bomb. In the army, the language is not begging. The language is instruction as command. You are either in, or you are out, or you are a casualty. And to reduce and eliminate casualties, we let people out. That's why I speak the way I speak. That's why when I stand here, I thunder, I roar, I quarrel, I fight. And people feel offended. Why? They don't belong. Everyone who is sent by me, insults from me, blesses that person. Praise God. That's how you know that you belong. That my word hurts you unto healing, does not hurt you unto offense. As for change, the day I change, fast and pray for me forever until I come back to this order. When I stand here, I wear something that makes me fear me. It's a matter of hell or heaven, death or life, light or darkness. Our God, shout it. Our God, Our God is the God of the armies. The Say, my God. my God. Make it personal. Rise to your feet. Let's scare the devil. Let's scare witches and wizards. Let's scare things in your root and foundation. Lift up your two hands. Let's scare something to get out of your system. Let's get something out of your spirit. Let's get some demonic guests in your heart and in your life to run and faint as they go to the abyss. Shout, my God, my God is, the God is the God of the armies. Hallelujah. Yeah. Be seated. Let's run through a couple of scriptures. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 3. Quickly. And then you prepare First Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. First of all, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 3. This man went up from his city. Say, I received this word. As God sought to cut down the enemy. And to circumcise me unto power. In Jesus' name. Amen. This word as I send them. Cancer is being healed. Yokes of addiction. As I speak, the violence of the word. So the word works for itself. You don't need to support the word. The scripture says, Are my words not like hammer and what? Fire and hammer. Hammer and fire. So you can, when you have spoken the word as God gives you, you don't need an addition. So as I speak, sickness that is 
made available by faith is being healed not by prayer but by the speaking ah how did god make heaven and earth no prayer sir there is no prayer in heaven the only prayer found in heaven is called the prayer of the saints <laughs> heaven is ruled by instruction and order and when you just say let it be on earth as it is in heaven you say we have to go beyond the place of prayer we pray as intercourse with god as fellowship we live by order and instruction that's how to bring heaven to the earth that you take instruction as a matter of failure or success death and life and you obey order as from god at that moment prayer is thanksgiving because by that word order is set against darkness and satan no power can break the order of god sir god submits to his word no devil can stand against the word of god so as i speak yokes yokes of molestation in addiction in pornography every form of addiction in drugs in uh, depression whatever you as i speak as I'm speaking, I'm not, I, I speak in the order of the word that says, let there be light. And the result was instantaneous. And there was light. In Jesus name. Amen. This man went up from his city. Did I say kidney is being healed? That's what I hear now. I speak. Someone who has kidney issue and does not know. You know a lot of people have things that will keep them, kill them and they cannot even go to the hospital. They are afraid of being told what it is. But your eyes, every symptom just shows. The swelling in some parts just shows and you don't understand. No digestion and all of that. Sir, in three days all symptoms will cease in the name of Jesus. This is, let me see the world. This man went off from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of the Lord of who? They're talking about the family of a Ghana where Samuel came from. This man went from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of who? The Lord, read it, read it. To worship. Read it everyone. This man went to want to go. This man went up from his city. Yearly. To worship and sacrifice. In Goshen 2024. Who are you coming to make sacrifices of your time? Your praise? Your fasting? Your resources to who? It's not the God of weakness. So when we say God of power and might. It's because he has enough host to do everything. When the marine is troubling you, there is a division in the host responsible for marine issue. When you have marital chaos and confusion, there is a brigade specialized in settling complications. Kalamonde prelas, rando to rise to your feet. And lift up your two hands. Say, I make myself available for the oppression of the hosts of Yahweh. In Jesus' name. We see that as I speak, surgery is taking place. <laughs> and somebody is laughing. I say surgery. Some years ago in the school of the Holy Spirit, a young woman who had multiple, multiple complicated issues. She says she used to be so smelly that she comes into the midst of people and everybody says, hum, 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 and she will know, oh, she has come. She will carry her first straight. And she had issues with her stomach that had no explanation. In the session of the school of the Holy Spirit, one night she went and she said, Badges and badges of medical personnel were operating on her. Removing things from her. This batch will finish 
another bath will go to another part of her stomach and remove things and remove things and remove. She woke up, the smell disappeared. She used to talk discharge and all sorts of things that would come out of dried up and her stomach. Everything returned. She stood publicly before hundreds of people and on the internet to testify this and mention how hopeless her life was. She was between 30 and 40 years old. So when I say surgery, sir, we are in the administration of the God of whose. God of whose means there are forces responsible for every situation. So nothing is off the table. Say nothing is off the table. Say it loud. Say in the government of the God of whose, nothing is off the table. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, only a sword, with only a spear, and with only a javelin. But see what David, read what David said. Read it loud enough for everyone, for a devil to hear and disappear. Come to, that means yeah that means i'm not coming alone i'm coming as many as the hosts of god sir so you now understand why a little boy a shepherd who had never fought in a battle killed the greatest champion of that time why he did not go alone many of you lose your job because you go alone with your certificate with your connection with somebody who used to be so so and so that is no longer <laughs> and you go naked and alone and the enemy uses you for breakfast and you see okay, I'm saying, Sir, in the battles of life it depends on how many are on your side Elisha said Lord open his eyes that he may see that those on our side are greater. And God opened the eyes of Gehazi and he saw on the mountain a host of chariots of fire. Glory to God. From today, as you enter into the mystery of the armies of God, you shall no longer be alone in your trouble. You shall no longer be alone in the battles of life. Say, I served the God of the armies. I can never be found alone. In the labor room, there will be hosts for you. While you travel on the road, the hosts are with you. Sir, during the interview, there are hosts and they are saying, give, give, give. I thought you would celebrate the God of us. I thought you would celebrate the God of us. Ah. They say that. So when I sang, 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 yeah e e e e e e e e when you believe in him, you are in that territory. When you are born into Christ, you are in that territory. When you serve him with understanding, you are in that territory. And they give him honor. Your healing is his honor. So how did they give, how do they give God honor when you are sick? They bring healing. And in that way, in on you born. When you are in bondage, how do they honor God? They release you from the stock. And in that way, 
in or you born? <laughs> we are in the days of God. Somebody will touch God physically. Yeah. And you may not, you will not see it with your eyes, but you will fear. And Jacob said, Oh, I have been. God has been here. And I didn't know. We are in the time of God. <laughs> What sickness will not be healed as I speak? He, he brought down Goliath. So if there is a Goliath that has been stopping you and boasting from generation to generation, you are fighting alone. You are coming against the Goliath with your fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer is not God. Fasting and prayer is a way of connecting and relating with God. So some people can just fast and pray. There is no relationship with God. There is no connection. There is no God in their life and they are not in God. Such people, the devil has no fear for you. He waits for you after fasting and prayer. He doubles your trouble. And you say, can you, can you walk? Can you walk? Can you walk? Can you walk? Shut up. Where is God in your life and where are you in God? That's where the host lies. In him. He's the God of hosts. It's not the God of fasting and prayer. So all this fasting and prayer, if you put your trust there, you will fail for a long time. This fasting and prayer is the greatest thing that should happen is that it should draw you closer and closer and deeper and deeper and more dependent on him so that you can sing with the psalmist, all my fountains are here. That's the mystery of fasting and prayer. Dependence on his host. Not for you to boast. Not for you to have credential against Satan. The devil doesn't fear your fasting and prayer. He fears God in you and you in God. Your relationship in God is the greatest threat against Satan. And Satan does everything on earth to make sure you don't pay attention to relating with God. He distracts you. You don't pay attention to the word of God. He distracts you. You don't obey the word of God. He distracts you. You run your life against the word of God. He distracts you. And when you have trouble, you go and fast and pray. Oh, it now becomes like people going to idols when they have trouble. Let me tell you, who goes to visit a demonic shrine for the sake of visit? They go there because they have trouble. Majority of you sitting down here, you go to God and pray because you have problem. You fast and pray because you have problem. So God is a supernatural idol for you. It's a shrine of heaven. And churches then become, become Christian shrines. Where you have problem and go, they can get them. Have a symbol, the same for me. That's why you go. Now, people don't like to go to Medium, Kika, and other places. I mean, Bremo, Okobo, and all those stuffs. Now, people go to churches. They say, I'm on they get here and I'm counseling. Counseling means I sit down and they tell me where I come from and all of that. And those are the same, the same medium transmuted because they are no longer patronized in using Ndum, Yenkang, Yukot. They are patronized the Bible. That's what is happening. And so people do those things. They don't have any relationship with God. And so when you come here, you are expecting this to be a shrine where you come and console God. No, it doesn't work that way. You come here because of God himself. That's, that's, I was sent to serve God. I was born for God. The reason I've not died is because I was born for God. I won't die on him. Any of us. Any of you, I don't know. 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 To the high point of this, you don't know. Give yourself to God in dedication and consecration. That's how, how it begins. Church has changed into altars of Satan 
and the devil is working. So people sit and they don't care about God. You tell them about God. You don't quite young, 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 God of hosts. <laughs> God of hosts. God of hosts. Oh, when the scripture says, and the king looked, he said, Ah, come and see. He said, What have you seen? In the book of Daniel, we threw three men in. Now I see the first men, the first of the men. They are now four men, and the first man looks like the son of God. From the heavenly, sir, that was a representative of the host. That was an announcement to the king, we many. That these ones are not three. These ones are backed by the armies. Amen. Glory to God. God himself introduces himself to his people as the God of hosts. And God calls his own people. Oh, glory to God. God calls his own people. His hosts. Sir, God doesn't look for, doesn't keep hopeless, useless people. He turns useless people into a host. He calls his people hosts. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. This is where the matter Consent you and I in this house. Exodus chapter 1, verse chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. This one we shall read it together. And I will respectfully ask you to rise to your feet. Exodus chapter 7, from verse 1 to 4. I will respectfully ask you. So the Lord said to Moses, Let's go. So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet you shall speak all that I command and Aaron your brother shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of his land and I will harden Pharaoh's hearts and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not heed you so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring read it again. But And bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of them. These men were suffering, but in the eyes of God, they were his armies. According to the covenant he had with Abraham, he did not permit any of them to be weak. He did not permit any of them to be poor. They were laboring. They saw themselves poor. But God saw them as his. Amen. The sitter. What, how are you seeing yourself right now? Yeah. What is your condition telling you? Oh, you are struggling. Oh, you don't have a husband. Oh, you are barren. Oh, you have not been able to do this. Oh, you are this. And your condition, your circumstances, telling you everything against the plan of God. But how is God seeing you? God says, when I take you out of that condition, you will realize your value. Can I tell you something? The chains that hold you is because you are fearsome. The people of Israel were kept as slaves in Egypt, not because they were useless. Because they terrorized Egypt. 
When the Pharaoh that did not know Joseph arose, he said, see these people, they are multiplying. They would take over Egypt. Let's enslave them. Let's reduce their number. All the attacks of Satan in your life is an announcement. All the troubles from hell is because the plan of God for you makes you terrifying. You are living, walking, breathing terror. And the enemy does everything to make sure you don't see. So you don't know the word of God. You don't have the revelation of the counsel of God. You don't know your name in God. You don't know your value in God. You don't know who you mean to God and who God means, what God means to you. That's the plan. That's the greatest attack of Satan. God says, I should warn you. I should warn you in this house. The prayer belt that we have started is a permanent thing. So there is nothing like after 40 days first, we go back. Our Thursday word meeting is a compulsory meeting. If you walk in Jerusalem, you will come back here. Wherever you are, why? Without the word of God, you are blind, deaf, and dumb. If you adjust for God, death will adjust for you. So sit down. There is nothing. Because let me tell you, by the grace of God, God has given me insight into spiritual warfare. I've been called into warfare for about 30 years. From the time my eyes were opened to real, to know God, the first thing I saw after I knew God was demons. The first one week of my salvation, I started seeing demons attacking me. A principality and power. I don't want to mention specific name. That rules over Okobisem. Kalabak. Akwaibom said. That rules confronted me within the first two weeks of my knowing God. Because he knew my mission. As at that time, I didn't know my mission. He knew I was coming here. He knew God raised me to send me home. So a principality over Okobusem, a Kwaibom, and Crossover, this territory, confronted me in the revelation. He said, I will deal with you. I started seeing demons. I, I, I closed my eyes. I see super, supernatural, ugly beings. From that time till now, I've been fighting the kingdom of darkness. No, no, no day off. I beg God, I thought after ordination, after, after ordination, I will no longer, I, I realize after ordination just gives you a new foundation, a new platform as a priest to fight in higher realms. So I've been fighting, I know a few things. Let me tell you one of the strategies the Holy Spirit says, I shall announce to you. This is how you have been staying in a circle of defeat. A time will come, you fast and pray. Tell that man to look at me. Tell that man, look at me, look at me, look at me. Somebody's sitting there. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. Pay attention to what I'm going to do. Don't joke. You will fast and pray in a season like this. And you are hot. You are spirit filled. You are sharp in the spirit. You respond to things and you are moving on. After this season, you relapse from the height and go, oh, oh, ah. Valentine is coming. After 40 days of fasting and prayer, you go and fornicate one night and lose all the fire. In the school of the Holy Spirit, where deliverance takes place, so people are delivered from spirit husband. And everywhere is rejoicing. And they are no longer there. They go on a break two months or, or two weeks, three weeks. Go back for naked. And the demons come and bring some other more wicked spirits. <laughs> and they come back. And the condition is bad. A young woman that had to do deliverance like the second time. Yeah. Light skin, very beautiful woman. I looked at her and said, I have done your deliverance before. And now you are filled with demons and we have to cast them out again. Tell me, did you go back into fornication? She said, yes. I said, okay. Congratulations. That opens the door. So what happens after all this season? The devil tells you, do talk fasting, do talk. So let me wait for, let me wait for you. Yeah. Let me relax a little. When you relax, the devil mass 
he assembles all his forces, shuts all the doors, brings you down, and puts you on that hole. And you discover you are struggling more than you had been before. Is there anybody who can tell me there is, I didn't say if it is your condition, but that you know about somebody. Somebody. So the devil all this while, for those of you who wake up at midnight, you fire prayer. You fire prayer and your life is lighter. Things are sharper. You are more cutting edge. The devil just, they say, let's wait. Yeah, I can't move 40 days they be going to say, like my children will ask me, Daddy, when is 40 days over? <laughs> because they know there is something that will happen after 40 days. I say, 40 days will, will finish the other week. I say, okay, they wait. Every day. Wait. So the devil, the little demons will say, oh God, when will 40 days be over? They say, I think they have six days left. <laughs> Just give them six days. Seven days later, no prayer. The ministers, they sleep. Mothers, they sleep. Fathers, they sleep. And the word of God says, while men slept. So the army, God, that's why God said, inaugurate it to do. So that by next week, when you give them instruction, they will understand. So army, no, they sleep. So when people sleep, that's when the enemy comes. So you have to tell your, so the prayer belt that we have opened is perpetual time that the army rises and fellowship spiritually every day and stands in the sight of God and makes war against him and releases marriages for the single children for the barren and keeps our children from drugs this family is a place that you can be sure that you will not lose not by magic of saying like a man of God telling you as long as in this boat you cannot lose. It's a lie. If you sleep, you will lose. Let's leave that. Those useless church and men of God lies in church. Because you have come to this church. You are under coverage. What coverage? The word of God says, The condition for Ninama in your ball is that the enemy. Not because it's in your church nonsense nonsense that people preach and feel good no church covers anybody your relationship with God covers you rise to your feet say I am free from lies say sleep has left my spiritual eyes in the name of Jesus Christ say I no longer lose any battle because I am in the army of the God of hosts. Shout, I no longer lose any battle. Because I serve in the army of the God of the armies. It means I don't fight battle alone. Glory to God. God has not made any provision for defeat for those who serve in his army. Any time the army of Israel was defeated, find out it was not from God. They were disorderly. They were sinful. They rebelled. Sir, in the army of God, there is no provision for 1% failure. So success in the army of God is not 99%. It's not even 99.99%. It's 100% and plus. Why? There are hosts. There are hosts. Just being in the army means you don't go out alone. You go out as a host. And somebody sees you. And somebody sees you. They say, walk there, I am alone. They say, you are not. Every time I see you, it just, it just looks like move a walk. He say, walk into me, walk into me, your office. That you are alone in the office and somebody comes in and there, there are businesses going on in the office. There are watchers in the office. There are keepers in the office. There, there are cleaners in the office. Those who remove cobwebs. Those, those who change things and restructure things. Communication experts talking about help from anywhere to come. Office is busy because you are not alone. Lift up your two hands. 
from today. I said, lift up your two hands. Say, from today. I no longer live my life alone. I can no longer be separated from the God of the armies. I am joined to the God of the armies. And I am part of his armies. My going out is with the hosts. My coming in is with the hosts. I travel with the hosts. I walk with the hosts. I marry with the host. I roast children with the host. I serve with the host. I prosper with the host. Is there any room for failure when you are in the host? Be seated. Be seated. God spoke of his people. My host. My army. Look at Psalm 105 and verse 37. Psalm 105 and verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Why? There is no place for the feeble in the army. This scripture is talking about Israel being delivered from Egypt. None came out feeble. None came out pitiable. None came out dependent. Have you heard of anybody who said, oh, these ones could not walk. So they were carrying them on the shoulder. No feeble person. Why? They carried gold and silver. Why? They were the hosts. The armies. And God told them, ask for wealth, for gold, for silver. Why? My army is not poor. Silver is mine. And gold is mine. Ask them. It belongs to me. They will give it to you. Sir, when you are in the army, you can ask for silver. You can make demand for gold. And they are given to you. And you cannot be feeble. As I'm talking to you, if you serve the living God and there is any feebleness in your life, it expires now in the name of Jesus. And they specialize forces to release you from that feeble condition. They are at work as I talk. No matter the condition that makes you feeble. I feel sick all the time. That is feebleness. It leaves you now. When did I say it? When? Not tomorrow. Now. Why? The host, they are multiple enough instantly to undress you of every condition of feebleness and close you with the majesty and the strength of the host. Glory to God. All those It's not physical. All the shoes. When God told Moses, remove your shoes. He thought it was a physical thing. The shoes. Your history. Your shoes, they tell the story of how, where you have been to. What you've been through. Sir, so when you look at the shoes of somebody, you can... You can trace whether it's come, somebody's coming from the swampy area. The shoes. Whether it's coming from a dusty area. The shoes. Whether it's coming from the wet, watery area. The shoes. So when God told Moses, remove your shoes. Means you can no longer look like where you have come from. I want you intentionally to say, I remove the shoes of my past. The shoes. I want you to take time. Take time and know that spiritually. The shoes telling the story of my disappointment. The shoes that carry the dust of disappointment. The shoes carrying the, the story of my, my depression and rejection. So let you go. I don't care what the doctor said. So I'm not interested in the report of the doctor. 
at this point I disregard what professions are said I still remove the shoes remove the shoes you are entering into the host of God no one is feeble no one is feeble in the name of Jesus Christ there is a change of administration glory to God the Bible consistently refers to Israel as the who's the army of God look at Exodus chapter 6 verse 23 to 26 quickly quickly as I'm talking to you things have been set out Exodus chapter 6 verse 23 to 26 Aaron married Elisheba the daughter of Aminadab the sister of Nashon and she bore him Nadab Nadab and Abio Eleazar and Itama the sons of Korah Aser and Elkanah and Abisaf these are the families of the Korathites verse 25 Aaron's son Eleazar married one of the daughters of Pusia, and she bore him Phinehas. These are the heads of the father's households of the Levites according to their families. Verse 26. It was the same Aaron. Say, it was the same Aaron. And Moses, to whom the Lord said, Do what? Bring out the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their word. According to their hosts, their divisions, that is the language of the army. According to their divisions. Give me that scripture in King James Version. Give me that scripture in King James. Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. According to their what? Their armies. So every tribe was an, a division of the army. When the scripture says, according to their division means tribe by tribe in the army. So it starts with division. The highest. And then you go down. Division. Say so God recognized them. Exodus chapter 12 verse 40 to 41. Exodus chapter 12 verse 40 to 41. Now the time that the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. And at the end of 430 years to the very day all the hosts all the armies, all the armies of the Lord went out. As I'm declaring, every one of the Lord's army now shall go out from destruction. Every one of the Lord's army shall go out of oppression. Every one of the Lord's army shall go out of delay. Every one of the Lord's army shall go out of sudden and premature death. Every one of the Lord's army shall go out of misfortune. It is the plan of God that in your family, his own army will go out of the condition of that family. So you are not expected to be like the rest of your family. If you belong to his army, you will go out. Go out. Not feeble with wealth. Be seated. You are a kingdom. When we talk about the armies, is the armies of God's kingdom. Colossians chapter 1. We are almost over. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. He has delivered us from the dominion. Give me that in NIV. He has rescued us from kingdom. Dominion means kingdom. Say kingdom. From the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom where hell rules, where demons can terrorize, where Satan can do anything. And brought us into what? Oh, come on. Brought us into what? The kingdom of the son in loves. This is your own story. I have talked about that of Israel. You are called out from the kingdom of your fathers and mothers. The kingdom of Mpo Fogete and Mpo Fogeka. The kingdom of ancestral government and territorial administration. By being born again, by being born of God, not of the will of man or of the will of flesh, but by God. John chapter 1 from verse 12. Being 
born by God, begotten of God, you are begotten into his own kingdom. And you have lost your place where Satan had right to decide your fate and to execute your fate. And he brought you not into a space where you can try to look for, oh, where shall my help come from? He has brought you to an organized entity as part of his army in the kingdom of the sun. I shared with you the other time. Mark chapter 1 verse 15. Repent. Why? The kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is the kingdom of the sun. And he has brought you into that one. So that in every kingdom there is army. So that you can serve him in the hosts. The host. Say, I am in the kingdom. So every one of you is here. You go to church, go to church. We don't accept the invitation to be saved. You have not yet accepted salvation. You have not turned your heart. How do we know you have turned your heart to God? Your sins are forgiven. The old nature is gone. And you submit willingly to the word of God and to righteous instruction arising from the word of God, from the authority that is set over you. In every kingdom, there are structures of administration. If you walk anyhow, you are outside the kingdom. If you do things anyhow, in your marriage, in your finances, anything, you do it as you want. You are not in the kingdom. The kingdom is unorganized. You are in the host. So in the army, go and Google or go to YouTube and look out for army parade. Every step, when you see people move, you can, it looks like one person. Have you seen it before? Sir, so that is it. Those are things I watch on the internet when I want. I see the parade in North Korea. I watched the parade in the Red Square. I watched the parade in St. Petersburg, in Russia. Watch parade. So you see people. It looks like one person. It just, it, it amazes you. It comes from endless hours of training to act as one. Move is not, it's not suggestion. Stop is not suggestion. Sit is not suggestion. So you see one man, he takes, he comes, he comes, he comes, he comes. Hey, whoa, everyone. And you just know one. If you do otherwise, you match somebody or somebody will match you. And that's what happens. Rise and pray. And you said this prayer yourself. Maybe Baba Untum. He said, until we pray like this, the devil uses you for breakfast. And the kingdom of God weeps for you. A disgrace to the order of glory. And you move around looking for help, whereas you are the help of God on earth. Glory. The army is the sign. Of security. So where a soldier lives, people see, feel more secured. So you are the security of their neighborhood. If you know who you are. People are teaching us Christianity without power. Christianity without force. Christianity without order. And you have eaten that and feel your stomach. And so when you come to hear order, it offends you and insults you. You expect a church pastor to take your name and make personal call to you. And visit your house to follow you up personally. So that you feel you are important in that church to come. That's not what God sent me for. Sent me for ordinary people who are not important enough to seek recognition. Those who recognize there is a bigger picture, there is a higher height, there is a larger large, largeness. Those who know that whatever I have seen today, I have not seen anything. Those who know that whatever I have reached today, there are new grounds to conquer. And so you humble yourself to take new instruction in order to get there. And so you listen to, you come and say, Lord, let me hear what you are saying today. That will make me rich there. Those are the people I sent for, I was sent for. Today, 
you have, your order has changed. Yeah. Everyone that has hurt me, accepted this will rise to your faith. Everyone that has hurt me, and accepted by this revelation, I change your order. Yeah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Be seated. I'm almost done. Every kingdom is about war. Kingdoms don't live by argument. Kingdoms live by might. That is why America can stand by Israel and the whole of Middle East, they are so angry. The Arab nations are so angry that everything being caused, they should swallow up Israel in one day. Do you know what? No one will dare. Iran says, I don't want escalation. Hezbollah in, in northern, northern Lebanon or southern Lebanon should be southern Lebanon. He said, we don't want to escalate. Everyone is holding their peace. America sends so, some warships and aircraft carriers. He didn't say we are doing anything. He just said, and those military terrors just appear looming large in the horizon, and people are behaving calmly. Power. The kingdom of heaven suffers what? Violence. We don't negotiate. All of you have done assignment. I dare. All of you and your fathers are mothers. Who have Tumobo? Tell me what thing you took out from Utumobo that is better. All of you that have gone to places for assignment to settle Satan, I dare you come and tell me what became better in your life. Why? You went to settle with Satan. Let me marry. Take this thing oh, and leave him. Means you are living by appeasing Satan. By begging the fallen angel. The one that is recorded in Revelation chapter 12. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought on the enemy. The dragon and all his angels fought back. But they were not strong enough. And they lost their place. The one that lost their pl his, his place. In the heaven that is destined to lose his place to lose his place wherever heaven is recognized is the one you go to back in assignment in settlement and you will gladly want to turn me into that minister so that i can speak the language of your past that's why god said remove your sandals that you hear me according to those who have been speaking to you you don't understand the truth of what I'm saying because I'm not speaking in the language of your familiar prophets. Prophets that have not added value to your life because they are liars from hell. We don't appease Obot. We enter into a new Obot in Christ. And then, by the might of God, settle every working tongue every nonsense eyes from the other area that would turn against us because we have moved from that kingdom by salvation into other one and they rise against you and by the sword which is the word of God you cut them off and live by violence live by violence let's look at that scripture this is where we are almost done there's not much prayer today prayer quick takes place from tomorrow Come and pray. Matthew eleven twelve, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven does what? Suffered violence. And the violent, the first one, your fasting and prayer is a way of showing violence. Rising in the nights, humbling yourself and disciplining yourself. Going to bed on time. Instead of wasting time watching nonsense, talking nonsense, discipline yourself to go to bed on time and wake up early enough to conquer in the night in order to rule during the day. 
is violence. Keeping yourself disciplined from the immoral things that are familiar in the world that everyone is part of, that's violence. You do violence to your flesh by rejection of the ways of the flesh. Why do you need to do battle? Why do you need to live the life of violence? Because there is a place called Ephesus. And your Ephesus is where God has opened a mighty door for you. This is where we are ending and you will, you will, you will speak. You will be angry. First Corinth chapter 16. I could just go to verse 8 and 9. But let me read from verse 5 so that you will know. Paul was in Ephesus as at this time that he wrote this letter. And he was talking about his itinerary, his plan. He said, verse 5 says, Now I will come to you, the Corinthians, when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia. And it may be that I will remain or spend the winter with you, that you may send me on my way, my journey, wherever I go. Verse, verse 7. For I do not wish to see you now on the way. But I hope to stay a while with you, if the Lord permits. All of this to let him know his to let them know his plan. Verse eight. Verse eight. Can you read it with me, everyone? Verse eight. I will tarry until Pentecost. I'm not in a hurry. I will have love to move now. But there is reason for me to tarry. I will have come to you. I really long to see you. I want to tarry until Pentecost. I want to give some time to pray. I want to give some time to travel. I want to give some time to manifest. I want to give some time to struggle and to show violence. Why? Verse 9. If I wish, if I had time, I will save everybody. If I had my permission, I would say everybody will rise. Everybody will rise. Why do I want to tarry in the place of prayer? Why do I want to keep fasting after fasting? Why do I want to keep praying after praying? Why do I want to keep watch after watch? For a great salato masita tata. This is why I want to tarry. Because a great and effective door of the kingdom has been opened to me but and I told you and I pray to the other kingdom there are many not many visitors not many coming to do pleasantries not many coming to say congratulations not many coming to say, oh, God is good. Not many coming to say it is well. Adversaries, contenders. Because kingdom is about contention. From the time of John the Baptist until tomorrow, until Christ comes, the kingdom so fast fight and battle. That is why God is looking for the army, not beggars. God is looking for a host, not weaklings. That's why the scripture said there was no weak one among them. None was feeble. Because there are the adversaries. Sir, when you take it easy, the adversary is rejoicing. When prayer is not found from the Father, I dare you, all of you men who are married here, and you can't remember when you joined hands with your wife and prayed over your children, you have given Satan the greatest gift. Families who are here, and your children don't see you pray, and they don't hear the name of the Lord from your mouth, you have offered Satan a free lunch. They are waiting in school in homosexual and lesbian from primary school. 
Sir, one of the people God sent to me to help was made a lesbian before she was eight in nursery school. Was made a lesbian. In nursery school by another pupil in nursery school. Sir, she abused other children because she said she watched from the parents watching movies that had sexual scenes and she was curious and from there learned it and then practices on others a little child becoming an abuse abuser sex offender because of parents a family that does not stand in the sight of God to contend against the adversary Against that pure destiny. Who knows who you carry? Who knows whom you have as a son? Who knows whom you have? Mary, did you know that your little boy will walk upon the waters? That's a song, not about Jesus. It's a song about you. It's a song about your daughter. It's a song about your son. It's a song about your grandchildren. So, Families that men don't pray. The scripture says men ought to pray always and not faint. And there are men who have the physical organs of men but have no spiritual manhood who cannot stand in the place of prayer. And their wives become the governor of the house and the king abdicates. And the language is spoken by the one who, who does not have responsibility. Sir, there is something called power. But there is something called authority. Authority is the right to use power. Power is ability. But without authority, power is not effective. Sir, it is the man in the house that wields authority. The woman can have power. If she is allowed... Without the authority of the man, her power is limited. It takes the extra intervention of God for redemption. Why do we have so many young people in court? Why do we have so many young people? He say, I'm homosexual, I'm lesbian, and all of this. And the Western nations are pushing them so that we begin to fight for rights. Sir, these things have history. Sir, the first deliverance I conducted 30 years ago was about a teenager who was possessed by two demons. One made her lesbian and one made her a sex addict. Now when the demon comes upon her 2 a.m. and it's raining with thunder, she will get out to go look for a man for satisfaction. 2 a.m. And the other one made her a lesbian and gave her power that any girl she touched will have that feeling. I said the only one person she touched that did not respond one of our disciples that had been filled with the Holy Ghost. She will go and spend weekend with that one, sleep on the same bed with that one, do what she does to other people, but no response. So these things go to our secondary schools. These things are transferred. And once it is transferred to somebody, it's like virus. It comes upon that person. And the person begins to transfer. And the Western world that is ruled by Satan, is pushing it to become a culture. So, how are we going to face the world with men who are empty flesh, who are not in the army? What are we begetting for the future? <laughs> what are we paying school fees for? <laughs> what are we giving toys? <laughs> From the time of John the Baptist, it is not Paul that said this. It is not Peter that said this. The master himself said, I brought fire. I did not bring peace. How oh, I waste the fire that already started burning. It suffers violence. How will the word of God say the weapon of our, of our warfare, warfare? Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 and verse 5. They are not carnal. So in the army, the difference between one army and the other, few things make the difference. Number one, training. Discipline. Training brings about discipline. Number two, weapon. Two things. That is why 
You are useless as an army without training. The word of God is inspired for training, for correcting, for refuting error. One of the most important things for training so that you may be equipped for equipping you to wear the weapon. And the weapon of our warfare is not flesh. So if you are trained in the flesh, you know everything about Hollywood. You know everything about that happens in the society. But you don't know the counsel of God. You cannot carry the weapon of our warfare. It is for those who have received spiritual training in the word of God that can carry the weapon. Rise to your feet, everyone. Close your eyes. You are either in or out. You are either on the side of God or you are not. You are either in the kingdom of light or not. Church is not the kingdom. Church is where the kingdom is revealed. Take a decision in your heart now. I submit to the kingdom of the beloved. Where there is forgiveness, the redemption. Where is, there is redemption, even the forgiveness of sin. Jesus Christ is the kingdom. He is the rulership of God. It is in him we are born as sons. And it is in him we are in the army. And we become the host of God. Just lift up your two hands. Say, I yield my will to you, Jesus. Many of you have prayed, God, forgive me. Prayed sinners, pray all sorts of prayer. But you have not submitted your will. It was when, said, when Adam and Eve used their will to offend God. That darkness came into the garden. You can only come into the army by your will. Means I submit to your lordship, Jesus. I shall no longer be my ruler. Speak those words. I shall no longer be my highest authority. I cannot save myself. I am not the final word. I am not the highest one. I turn to you. I use my will to surrender to you. Please forgive me my sin, my rebellion. And take away every influence of Satan. Oh. I yield my heart. I yield my heart to you, Jesus. Take this heart. Forgive my sin. Give me the grace of new life. Renew the new life in me. Take me into your army. I no longer want to be alone. I no longer want to be naked. I no longer want to walk as I like. I no longer want to walk as I please. Let the spirit of the sun come upon me. Lift up your two hands and say, let the spirit of the sun come upon me. The spirit of the army of God. <sighs> Receive the, the garment of the sun. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Garments are changing. Angels, take those dirty garments. Take feebleness. Take weakness. Take righteousness. Angels, take darkness. Angels, take sickness. Angels, take shame. Take wheelchairs. Take blindness. Take deafness. 
angels take dumbness take insanity take leprosy angel take depression ah! angels take somebody from the grave ah! rescue somebody from the water every altar that keeps somebody I give an order chains are broken chains are broken chains are broken Chains are broken. Chains are broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up the oil in your hand. The sixth anointing. The seventh anointing. The seventh anointing. Oh God, pour the grace of the army upon this anointing. Let everyone with this anointing be lifted from weakness and transported into might. Let the army begin. Let families come alive. Oh, failure is over. In the name of Jesus, a little bit of that oil upon your in your hand. If you want to share with somebody who wants to, you can. And lay your right hand, that hand with little oil, upon your forehead. And begin to speak. Say, the God of the armies, rise in my life. Rise. Rise. The might of the God of the armies rise. The power of the God of the armies rise. The power of the God of the armies rise. The glory of the God of the armies rise over me. The wealth of the God of the armies rise over me. The wonder of the God of the armies rise over me. The miracles of the God of the armies rise over me. I surrender. Equip me, equip me for battle. Equip me for victory. Say, God of the armies, rise for my sake. God of the armies, rise for my sake. God of the armies, rise for my sake. Psalm 68, verse 1 to 2. Let God arise. Psalm 68, verses 1 and 2. Let God arise. Begin to speak. God of the armies, arise in my battle. Arise in my family. Who is speaking? God of the armies, arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Put that scripture there. Let the God of battles arise and scatter my enemies. Arise and scatter defeats. Oh, the God of the armies. Who is speaking? Speak like you are going to war. Say, the God of the armies. Arise in my foundation. Arise in my office. Arise over my wife. Arise over my children. Arise. Arise over my resources. Arise over my business. Oh God of the armies. Arise. Let the enemies be scattered. Let those who hate my God flee before you. Speak. Your presence, let it rain, cause the rain, let it fall. We are in your presence, let it rain, cause the rain, 
let it fall in your presence let it rain cause the rain let it come on us oh in your presence let it rain let your fire let it rain on me we are crying let it rain we need your fire we need your power we need your violence the help of your host Cast your rain, let it fall out in your presence. The pardon receives children in your presence. The lamb rises in your presence, blind I see. Cause your rain, let it fall on. Father, in your presence, enemies is defeated. The brokenness is reversed, and darkness goes. Halabushan and Atolia, speaking the Holy Word. Mane Brolanda to Libra Kata. Say, go rise for me. Go to your family. Go to war. Go to war in your roots and foundation. Go to your war. Go to war by the God of hosts. In the name of Jesus. The weapon of our warfare is not kind of a mighty in God. Divine in origin. Unto the pulling down of strongholds. Bring down strongholds in your family. Strongholds against your children. Strongholds of death. Strongholds of lies. Strongholds of shame. Strongholds of decay. Dry bones shall rise again. Open your mouth, declare, arise, the God of hosts. Baba, hey. Baba, speaking the Holy Ghost. Baba. Rise and walk. Rise and break through. Rise and be healed. Rise and break out from circles of defeat. Rise and manifest the army. The spell of the marine has left you. The power of witchcraft has left you. A cold kingdom is broken. The glory of God is here. Let God arise. Let his enemies scatter. Let the God of hosts arise. 